Hey, it's Clay, and this will be a video chart on Bitcoin. We will take a look at the four hour time frame. Real quick, what do I mean by four hour in case maybe you're new to charts? Instead of each one of these candlesticks here representing one day's worth of price action, which is what you would normally see, each one represents four hours worth of time. So while this here may look like a couple of months, it's actually just the past couple of weeks broken down into four hour time slices. I like to do this time frame that is a good job of telling the quote unquote story of the price and then makes mapping out levels of support and resistance a bit easier to see. And given the crypto markets are open 24 seven, um, so you know the markets will be open all weekend long. It'll allow me to just talk about broad levels. So even if you're watching this, let's just say on Sunday, you know the chart will still be relevant to you unless some sort of extreme move happens. But that's kind of the goal here is just to talk about broad levels. And that way, whenever you're watching this, whether it's you know an hour from now or you know, 48 hours from now, you can just ask yourself, you know, well, where does the price stand relative to these, you know, certain levels? And that first level to keep an eye on and ask yourself about, which I've talked about in several of the past videos, is that green line right there at 8,000, which I've talked about being that ideal level of support. Ideal meaning, yeah, if the chart can stay above it, that would definitely be a huge sign of power, but it's not like if the price breaks below it, it's, you know, the end of the road or, and everything's totally ruined, nothing like that. And over the past 24 hours, actually the price did drop down below it, but to give the bulls credit, as of right now, as I record the video here, uh, you know, the bulls have done a great job of recovering from that movement downwards. And now the price is back up above that green line. So therefore, you know, 8,000 would still be considered that, you know, key area of support. Now, if over the weekend, the price doesn't hold above that $8,000 mark, next key level to keep an eye on is gonna be that purple line right there, which again, I've talked about in past videos. And that is the 50 period something moving average. And that's essentially right where it found some support right there. So again, if you're watching this, let's just continue to go with Sunday. Ask yourself, where's the price relative to 8,000? If it's below 8,000, where's the price relative to that purple line? If it's below there, then I should probably map out one more area of support just in case something crazy happens. The next overall level of support would be down here right around the 7,300 mark. Um, so those will be you know, definitely what I would consider kind of the three broad levels of support that should keep the chart uh, pretty relevant over the entire weekend. What about levels of resistance? In terms of where the sellers are hanging out at, a couple key levels. The first one I would consider more of a shorter term one and that's here at about 8,300. After 8,300, next key level of resistance keep an eye on is up there at the 8,500 mark. So again, you're watching this on Sunday. If, the, if you happen to be watching this and the price is up at 8,600, well, that would be a sign that the chart is doing very, very well and the bulls are just gaining that much more momentum because they've actually broken through both those levels of resistance. With that being said though, if you're watching it and the price is still down below these red lines, that doesn't mean anything's wrong with the chart. It just means that there's more consolidation occurring. So keep an eye on these overall levels and that'll help keep this chart as relevant for as long as possible over the weekend. So yeah, Monday should be uh, you know pretty interesting and and we'll see what things look like when I'm back Monday after the market close. One of the biggest questions that I get is, hey Clay, how do you find the stocks that you trade? So what I've done is put together a free resource guide where I talk about the tools that I use to locate stocks that I find interesting and think may have potential. So if that sounds like something that could add value to you as a trader, then click on the image that is up on the screen right now and I will email you the guide. The guide itself is very short and to the point and best part, it's completely free. Thanks for watching the video. Let me know if you have any questions.